Hey tennis friends, I'm here at the La Habra Tennis Center in La Habra, California for the La Habra Open Tennis Championships. Now this event features NTRP levels, age divisions, and of course the open level divisions. That's what I'll be covering today because today is championship day. And it's a beautiful day out here in Southern California. This is the first day of December, that's right, December 1st, and it's 80 degrees out right now. And that's why I always encourage you to get online at USTA.com and check out Tennis Link to find out when there's tennis events happening in your area because nothing beats coming out in the outdoors to check out live tennis. Now the matches have already started on center court, so let's get right to the action. First up is the Women's Open Singles Championship. Receiving in the near court is Inna Shibahara, a Southern California junior from Rancho Palos Verdes, who is the number two seed. Now serving from the far court is Caitlin Christian, also a SoCal native who is a senior at USC and is seeded number one. in a Shibahara to serve from the near court to Caitlin Christian. Caitlin Christian to serve from the far court. After another changeover, in a Shibahara to serve. Caitlin Christian serving. Inna Shibahara serving. After another changeover, Inna Shibahara to serve. I'm here right now with the winner of that match, Inna Shibahara. Inna, that was a tough match out there today. Yeah, it was really tough and it was a big challenge for me and I just had to play my best out there and I think I did that very well. Well, I know that you've played Caitlin before and you've mm -hmm. beat her before. You came out today, you had uh, you know some good matches leading up to this, mm -hmm. but uh, you actually dominated out there. I mean, 6-0, <laughs> 6, -0, 6 -0. She did not get a game off of you. Yeah. Uh, to what do you attribute your success today? Well, I didn't really expect that, but I just went out there and thought about my match from last time, and I just remembered what her weaknesses was and what her strength was, and I just thought about playing aggressive, and that's just it. <laughs> so you had a game plan when you went out there, and so when you're executing your game plan, uh, and you know you win the first set 6-0, I mean, obviously it's stay the course. Did she try to do anything different that you could tell to adjust? Or did you have to uh, constantly adjust or just stay with the same plan? I just stayed with my own plan. I'm not really sure what she really changed, but I think that I just played out there and just stuck with a plan, just play aggressive. So you're only 15 years old. You're ranked number one in Southern California in the 16th and 18th, is yes. that correct? Yeah. So you've had a great year being ranked number one. Yeah. What are your plans to uh, uh, do even better next year? My plans are to do better in the 18s nationals and play more um, 18s nationals and be more successful in that. And I just started playing in the 18s nationals, so it's, I'm just going to try my best out there. Trying their best on center court right now are two former UCLA Bruins battling it out for the Men's Open Singles Championship. Receiving in the far court is Nick Meister, who he last saw on groundspass.net at the U.S. Open National Championships at Claremont. Now serving from the near court is Daniel Kozakowski, who had to take a few months off this year because of a shoulder injury and is working on his comeback. After a changeover, Nick Meister to serve from the near court to Daniel Kozakowski. Oh. 
After another changeover and a change of shirts, Daniel Kozakowski to serve. Nick Meister serving. After another changeover, Nick Meister to serve the remaining highlights. I'm here right now with the winner of that match and the champion for this year's event, Daniel Kozakowski. Daniel, that was a tough match out there today. Yeah, it definitely was. I mean, me and Nick, we've known each other for a while. We knew it was going to be a close match, and luckily I was able to come away with the victory. Well, I know you guys are both Bruins, you know, and you've played against each other and played yeah. together and stuff like that before. How hard is it when you know you're going to go into a final against someone that you know uh, that personally? Uh, I mean, you just know it's going to be a close match since we've practiced with each other a lot and we've played each other. In a couple tournaments before so I mean we both know each other's game so it wasn't a shock that it was pretty tight both sets. Well let's talk about that match you know the yeah. first set you guys were pretty close there but in the second set you kind of broke it away I think you took the second set 6-2 what was the difference between the first set and the second yeah. set? Um, well actually in the second set I was down a break but I think that actually helped me I just loosened up a little once I was down and I started playing better so I think actually going down early in the second helped me in the long run in the second set. So what you're saying is by going down it actually I, gave you... Yeah, I loosened up a little. Loosened and up then, and made you fight back? Yeah, and then I started <laughs> playing better, and once I got the break back, it just played really well. The year is coming to an end. Yeah. Uh, you've had an up-and-down year, you know, with your injury and stuff yeah, like definitely. that. Uh, what are your plans for 2014? Uh, I'm going to start the year off with a warm-up tournament in New Caledonia. It's a challenger, and then I'll play Australian Open qualifying. So, And then after that, probably a challenger in Hawaii. So... I'll have a busy January. Hopefully, I'll get off to a good start. All right. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Getting off to a good start now is the Men's Open Doubles Championship match. Receiving in the near court just out of frame is Jonathan Sanchez, head coach at Concordia University in Irvine, with his partner and Concordia grad Bruno Santarelli in the white hat playing the net. They are the number three seeds. Playing the net in the far court is Ricky Balin, a former San Diego State player, with Ace Matias currently at UNLV serving. They are an unseeded team. Now Ace Matias to serve to Jonathan Sanchez. Bruno Santarelli to serve to Ace Matias. Again, Ace Matias to serve to Jonathan Sanchez. After a changeover, Bruno Santarelli to serve to Ricky Balin.
Jonathan Sanchez to serve to Ace Matias. After another changeover, Bruno Santarelli to serve to Ace Matias. Once again, Ace Matias to serve to Jonathan Sanchez. I'm here right now with the winners of that match, Ace Matias and Ricky Balon. Guys, that was a tough match out there today. Yes, yeah. it was. It was really close. Yeah, it was, uh, they had match points on us. It was, it was pretty, we got pretty, I was pretty tired. I don't know about Ricky. He looked like he was pretty loose, though. Well, your match started out in the late afternoon, and then it went into the darkness, you know, and I know the lights here are, uh, are not as bright as, obviously not as bright as the daylight. Uh, did the light affect you guys at all? Uh, I think it just affected my one point when it, they hit a really high lob and it got lost in the sky. But other than that, it was fine. For me, it was just, I actually like it dark because, uh, <laughs> I don't know, the sun was in my eyes on the other side. You had at least three match points in that last set that I saw against you guys. And uh, you were down 4-5, three match points you saved. You came back, you brought it to a tie break. You started getting up in the tie break. They started coming back. What was going on between you guys? in order to keep up the energy and uh, pull that out? Well, uh, we were up a mini break the whole time in the tiebreaker. And I just, at, I think it was like 3-2, I just noticed that if I held my both both my serves, then we'd be in the clear. If Ricky just hits two good serves, then we'd be good. So <laughs> yeah. that was my plan. I don't know if it was Ricky's plan. But I yeah. was just trying to play each point. I was trying to think of each point as a, as a first point and not get myself tight. Just trying to stay loose. So on my side, I talk a lot about doubles and teamwork and all that. Do you guys play together a lot? Are you friends? How did you guys get together for this tournament? Uh, we started playing when we were like 14, 16. So we played quite a bit. We used to play nationals a lot. Yeah, so. Yeah, we uh, we, we just gelled together. Yeah. And it's, uh, I feel comfortable with him on, on my side. Yeah, like I'm used to like what his movements and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I know it's so when I play with other people, I get confused sometimes because I think they're going to do something. But they end up doing the like completely different thing. When Ricky exactly. does something, I know what he's gonna do. Exactly. So then we just we don't have to say anything on the court, honestly. Yeah. I gotta tell you, those four guys brought on three full sets of non-stop doubles action. It was very exciting and very grueling for some of the crowd that was here. We had a small but mighty crowd. And that's why I always encourage you to get online at USTA.com or check out Tennis Link or anything else to find out when there's live tennis events in your area. Because I tell you, watching these on TV or even the highlights of my videos is not the same as it's coming out here live and seeing it right there in person. Well, that's going to wrap up my coverage from the La Habra Open Tennis Championships. I'll see you next time with more tennis outside the lines.